Don't miss another fantastic Forge World review, this time on the Legio Custodes Achilles Dreadnought. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you again today, taking a look at the latest awesome Contemptor Dreadnought from Forge World. This one's a little bit bigger. It doesn't come in a little clamshell like the last one we saw for the Custodes. It's got the full-on double clam treatment right here. Boxed all up, good to go there. It's a little working with resin kit. If you ever have any problems with Forge World, make sure you keep this uh, particular little number right here because they will reference that when they go to help you and give you replacement parts. Well, let's take a quick, closer look at this one here. Now, this is uh, the upsized version of the Custody Spear right here. I think it's called the Dread Spear, I want to say. Not exactly sure, but it is pretty dope. Where is it? It is... Nope, that's not it. Totally missed it here. Well, anyways, let's take a look at the model itself. There's the exploded view, and you can see there's all sorts of interesting parts in there. Here it is. The Achilles has, yeah, the Dread Spear. Okay, I was right. I was like, that sounds so right. I want to be right right now. So here's the exploded view. You can see it's got your basic uh, contempt contemptor kind of layout between the legs that sockets into um, the little waist right there. And then you've got the two different sets of feet, whether you're walking or push, pushing off or pushing down or landing, I guess. I don't know. Basically walking. You can make it walk or you can have it standing still. Whatever you want to do, there's a couple different options there. The Dread Spear itself, and then all of the different options from the tops here, which are going to be your shoulder pads, to your weaponry for the Underslung. Remember, the Dreadnought Close Combat Weapons can both have two different types of weapons. We're going to show you that here in a second. For lack of a better term, I don't know the exact terminology, but it's a Stormbolter and a Flamer, but we'll get to the exact terminology here in a second. I'm still learning all the custody stuff because there's all sorts of different words, but they all do kind of the same thing as we're used to in 40k or conventional 30k, but there's always, you know, a little bit of twist because they have, a, as the Joker put it, such good toys. <laughs> and then you've got all of your, uh, uh, basically your accessories and the two different sets of hands. So you can have them holding the spear like this with a fist and the hand coupling the spear, or you can do it vice versa. Just it kind of depends on what you want to do, but you have the options right there, which are going to show you on the spear. So here's the breakdown of how it goes together. Of course, you got the foot that goes into the shin, so to speak, that goes into the thigh. I feel like there's a song about this. And then the extra piece right here, what do they call this? Cow counter? Counter? I don't know what that is. That might be some conventional armor smithing that I'm not aware of. But somebody can comment on that. Of course, the sarcophagus, which has that great back style that we've seen before on the custodies. And of course, it slots together. And then right here is how you build out the shoulder. So you got the shoulder, the upper arm, the left elbow, the uh, fan plate, the van brace. Wow, that is... Holy cow, that is a lot right there. And here you can see the detail of whether you want them pushing off or landing or landing uh, flat-footed kind of type deal. And then on the back, you see how it basically goes together right there. And then you can choose what you want to do as far as putting the hands on. So you can have it clasping or you can have it open palming. And right there you can kind of see. And then here's the detail of the spear itself. You have to put a couple extra bits on there, but uh, depending on how you want it held. And then... The top goes together very similar to like what we saw with the Leviathan Dreadnought shoulder pads, top plate, and the interior headpiece right there. So you could leave those off if you want to airbrush them separately or attach them because you're not going to be able to keep much else off here because it has to go together to get your you know stance down basically how you want to do it. Now let's open this up and take a look at the kit itself. Now right here you can already see this whole side is reserved for the Dread Spear itself which Let's zoom in a little bit on that. I feel like everybody's going to want to see the detail. There it is. Fantastically detailed kit. It's a little bent right here. You can see where the sprue kind of locks it in. So it did when they took it out of the sprue. It does need a little bit of heat and bent up. But other than that, it looks pretty well detailed right there. Very cool stuff. So there's that. And then we're gonna flip out and take, of course, it's on a 60 mil base, which everybody already knows at this point, I'm sure. You've got your fantastically well detailed thighs and hips right here. These hips don't lie for sure. So there's that. And your feet sections, which you already saw, they are a little bit tighter and thinner 
than what we've conventionally seen in the past. Let's actually check. Oh yeah, that's why, because it has fleet, so it's a little bit, little bit uh, quicker there. Now this is the same front that we saw in the other pattern of Custodes Dreadnought. The shoulders as well. Here's the top that goes on. Remember I said it's just like, very similar to the Leviathan, and the, of course the other one. There's your bottom of your feet. Again, bits we saw already previously. Here is the back uh, waist joint thingy. And then we've got uh, lots of different parts for the arms themselves, which we're not really gonna get into. The back exhaust, that are very similar to the Custodes themselves. Here's your arm elbows with the little ball joints right there. Everything's fantastically detailed. And then here's the hands that you can kind of see what I was talking about there. You've got the open palms here, whichever one you want to do. If you, if you go this way, it lines up with the, cause these are just the fingers, you know what I mean? So like, if you want to go this side, you just take this bit right here, which is what they sculpted with the open thumb and you put this on it. But if you want to go over here, same deal, they have this bit with this bit goes onto it so they don't have to make additional parts and then of course the grasp as well right there makes total sense once you kind of think about it and run it through your brain of course my visual might have helped just a teeny bit and then here's oh, actually they put two in here okay well that makes it even easier so depending on what you want to do you, it, uh, you've got left or right open palm and fists, and then right there, the open palm and the fist as well. So you got open palm, grass palm, and closed fist for both different ones. And then here's your weaponry. Like I said, there is an option for both a uh, Storm Bolter variant and the Flamer variant, depending on which one you go with on each one of these. And the uh, Dread Spear itself actually has a weapon, which we're gonna show you in the, the breakdown here in a second. And here's the other Storm Bolter pattern. So you can, there's actually a lot of different armor, arm, armor mint you can take on this guy. It comes standard. And then here's the Custodes Helm right there that, get, that locks right in that little cradle. Very well detailed stuff. And here's, I'm not gonna get these out cause we're gonna lose them, but the little, what do they call these counters and the joints for the arms. So all in all, a very well detailed miniature, of course, and it comes very securely in here. And there you can see the extra little uh, bits and pieces right there that go along with it. So I'm gonna wrap this back up. I didn't want to lose or mess up the spear itself because it's a fantastic, like I said, it's already a little bent, but it's really cool how they put it in here. I've always loved to see Forge World, you know, now we're getting everything pre-boxed and stuff like that. It's great that they're really, kind of realizing that they were having an issue before, maybe having to replace a lot of um, materials, but they just come coming out with uh, the packaging like this, I think was a big boon for collectors and always knowing that what they're gonna get is probably gonna be at least their best effort put forward and might be missing parts and in some cases uh, a defective part, but generally there isn't gonna be any breakage in the uh, crossing of the ocean, at least coming here to America, which is nice and I definitely applaud their efforts. Now, if we take a look at the book, here are the rules. I'm gonna flip back to some of the other uh, material that's in here as well because this guy's actually pretty badass for 200 points so let's zoom out a little bit so here he is he is an elite choice for the custodies talents of the emperor i guess it isn't just custodies he can have sisters of silence in here as well so 200 points uh weapon skill six so he's billy badass in combat and does still doesn't hit on twos but still pretty good uh ballistic skill five which is going to come into play strength eight 13 13 11 rear, which it is only a dreadnought after all. Initiative five, attacks four, and three hole points on the day. Now, here's what makes him really cool. He does have two close, uh, dreadnought close combat weapons with the inbuilt Lastrum Storm Bolter. That was the, remember I said it's basically Storm Bolters and Flamers all day here. The Lastrum Storm Bolter is 24 inch range, strength five, AP four, assault one, heliothermic detonation weapon, which we've seen a lot of with the Custodes themselves. So if a target suffers one or more unsaved wounds from this weapon is not slain, they have to take a toughness test. If they fail it, they are ID'd out. So that's kind of crazy. So if you shoot a squad or you shoot a, shoot a character and he doesn't have eternal warrior and he does fail a save and he fails his toughness test, well, eh, you know, it's an unfortunate series of events, but it could happen. You just never know, right? Um, it definitely comes into play with some of the monstrous creatures and things out there, which you don't see a whole lot of in 30K, let's be honest, but still they are there. And it's just something to be aware of. 
Um, smoke launcher, searchlight, refractor field, so he does have an invulnerable. It doesn't have the antimontic reactor thing, thing and bobber that most um, of the contemptor patterns have. So that's something to keep in mind too. So there's a drawback and a benefit, so to speak. Extra armor, of course, and it does have fleet. Remember, I said his little feet are a little, a little thinner. I guess he helps him run really, really fast, right? Um, <laughs> move through cover and counter attack again, really, really fast. We're going fast. Woo! We got dreadnought. We got feet. <laughs> Super crazy. So the dreadnought itself can be equipped with the Aculus Dread Spear with built-in Corvée Laz Pulsar. So technically stock, it does not come with the Dread Spear. You upgrade it for 40 points, you get the Dread Spirit. It takes you up to eh, 240 points. Now, granted, you still get those built in Storm Bolters, which are pretty badass. The Achilles Dreadnought may replace any of its last from Storm Bolters with any of the following, which we just saw the bits for right there a Twin Link Adthric Destructor or a single Infernus Incinerator. Now, the Incinerator is okay, but let's it's basically a flamer. But check out this Twin Linked Adthric. Destructor for 15 points doesn't seem too bad. It does get hot, which is a little bit of a uh, detractor So it's a 12 inch range strength 5 AP 2 mm, Liking it assault 1 instant death armor bane gets hot weapon right there And you can switch out both of them for five points each ten points on the day mm, You're gonna be running stuff and I feel like that's pretty good now The only problem is it, it does gets hot so you could take a wound, but let's take a look at a save Wait, where's the save? Oh my goodness doesn't have a save huh well that's really interesting so if you do get hot on a vehicle you just take a hull point wah 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 oh wait you got a refractor field hey i see a combo <laughs> so well it might happen it might not happen you can't reroll the one but at weapon skill six i mean the ones are bad regardless but you throw a twin link on this guy oh wait it is twin linked oh my goodness what is going on right now what are the odds of getting a one it's great. It's actually pretty good. I think for five points, it's a solid upgrade. Oh, it's 15 points. Well, now I'm on the fence immediately. <laughs> that was the only part of my routine that wasn't planned right there. It's 15 points, not five. Okay, so I think for 10 points, it's an auto grab. At this point, if you're taking the spear, you're at 240. Then you'd be at 270 with that. Eh, it starts to get pricey. I feel like... Hmm. Here's what I would do. I would take... The Dreadnought Close Combat, I would, I would just take it to Close Combat Weapons, so you got your two fists, which obviously isn't this kit. Like, this kit is this right here. So if you're going to do that, you need to get something else, I suppose, which they haven't come out with. Maybe they'll come out with a version that doesn't run the spear, or I guess you wouldn't need the hook in the spear, because remember, you get the double you get the double fist, so you can just have them, like, kind of kung fu, like, blasting, kind of gunslinger status, and then that would get you up to 230. So if you're gonna run at people and straight up like shoot them like your Mega Man or something, I feel like that would be kind of cool. At five points each, you get a single Infernus uh, Incinerator that you can slide out, and that isn't too bad. Where is that one? I think that's on this page. Yep, it's a little bit different from the Fire Pike that uh, some of the other dudes can have. It is Template Strength Six, AP Four, Heavy One. Like I said, it's a little bit better than a Heavy Flamer by one point of strength. So. Not too shabby, but not uh, super baller either. Now, how good is this Dread Spear? Well, let's take a look. So here it is. In addition to their standard armor, which is uh, the dexterity and the power of the Aculus pattern Dreadnought, they're able to wield the scaled up version of the iconic spear of their Legio with devastating power. So the Dread Spear is melee, it's strength 10, AP2, it's impaling and master crafted. So you can switch out Maybe equipped with a Aculus Dread Spear and built-in Corvée Last Polster. And what do you switch out? You don't switch out anything, it looks like. So it's equipped with two Dreadnought Close Combat Weapons with an inbuilt Storm Bolter. And then you just give them the Dread Spear. Huh. Okay, well, there's no detraction there whatsoever. So you're getting plus one attack for charging. You're getting plus one attack for two melee weapons right here. And then you're not getting any bonus for that. But if you choose to use that, you are getting five attacks on the charge. Four, excuse me, six attacks on the charge at strength 10, AP2. And impaling also gives you the ability on a six to hit. It is now a destroyer hit. Now remember here, sure, it's weapon skill six. 
but you know, obviously ones and twos are always bad. If there was a way to give him some twin linked ability right here, that would be awesome because then you'd be rolling hopefully some ones into sixes because it's actually average if you roll it. If you roll a one, chances are you're gonna roll a six afterwards. So just some, some food for thought right there. There are a couple different ways to run this guy and you don't necessarily have to give him the spear to be effective with his gunslinger cypher-esque kind of blasting ability at 12 inch range with his uh, short range storm pistols of power right there. So I'm thinking it, I think this is a cool kit. It definitely will add a lot of character to your Grey Knights army. And of course, if you magnet, or excuse me, Grey Knights, wow, to your Custodes army. And if you magnetize the fist, so you can have the fist like this, or you can have them doing the Bolter type deal. Well, there's, you got a little bit of play there. So you can switch them out, maybe even magnetize the arms or at the hips. So you could have them kind of swinging with the, with the spear or perhaps just kind of swinging with the John Woo gunfighter kind of type deal right there. So I think it's a cool kit. It'll definitely give a lot of hobbyists out there the, um, I guess opportunity to show off and showcase their talents with both magnets and also posing and also fantastic gold detail as well that I'm sure we're going to see here in the near future. So that's it for this one, folks. Thanks for watching. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net. Visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. The longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.